Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. Welcome back to my channel. Oh gosh, I am excited but nervous. I have never done the cling film technique or the crushed velvet technique or whatever you want to call it in resin. I tried this once before for my Valentine's collab with Claire's Crafty Corner and it was an unmitigated disaster. So I'm hoping that won't be the case this time. Um, <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be using the Let's Resin Epoxy for this because I want this first layer to be really clear and this resin, although quite expensive, gave me beautiful clarity last time I used it. I'm going to be using this coaster mould. Um, first layer, I'm not going to actually put anything in the coaster holder, but I've got them all here ready. This came from Amazon. It was a gift, but it was on my Amazon wish list. I am using polyurethane sheets rather than cling film because I believe that is easier to pick it out but this is the cheapest chips polyurethane so it may end up being just as much of a nightmare as cling film is but I'm prepared to give it a go and see how I get on because last time was as I say just an absolute disaster. The next layer I'm going to be using my Let's Resin Chameleon powders. I'm going to choose four of my favourites out of here. I haven't decided which yet. Um, not decided whether to leave the, the holder just black or whether to put some chameleon in there. I'll worry about that in a minute. So basically these are quite shallow so I think it's going to make this even more challenging than this technique already is. So I'm gonna aim for about a third full in resin so that I've got space to then backfill them. Um, I may have to go even less than that, um, but I'm not quite sure how that's gonna go. You need at least some resin so the cling film isn't poking out of the bottom. They may not be deep enough to do this, but I have seen people do this with pendant molds. So, I'm going to give it a go. Um, so yeah, what I'll do is obviously wear my respirator and my goggles and my gloves and I'm wearing an apron in here. I'll mix up the resin off camera once I've got my PPE on. I'm actually going to cut down some of this um, drop cloth because it's a huge sheet at the moment and I think I'm going to try to do these individually rather than do one big sheet on all of them because I just think it's going to be easier. Um, I think it'll be much easier that way. So I'll mix up my resin, clear the decks, and then I'll be back. So I really, really hope it works this time because I am so itching to try this technique properly and get a lovely result out of it. So let's keep everything crossed for me. <laughs> So obviously I have my respirator on here so it was kind of hard to talk through what I was doing but I just put down a thin layer of resin that just covered the bottom of the coaster moulds. Um, I actually mixed up enough resin for two and then I heated it up um, once it was in the mould with my heat gun just to try to help alleviate any bubbles. And then I just very very slowly took a piece of the polyurethane and I kind of laid it so that the resin kind of took it up really slowly and I did this so that I was trying to minimize any bubbles getting trapped so there are times where I had to kind of pick it up a bit and just redo it to try to get rid of bubbles once that was down and I thought the bubbles were gone I'm just basically using my fingers to just carefully smush it up and pinch it together not pinch it together tightly because you don't want the polyurethane to get caught underneath and then not able to peel off but you want enough texture so that it gives all of that depth and this is hard to do when you're wearing gloves that are two sizes too big for you so um, top tip get some gloves that fit when you're trying this because it made life really difficult I also made my um, cut down sheets a bit too big as well but better too big than too small so I'm doing the same thing on the second coaster mold here I only mixed up enough resin for two because because I wasn't sure how long this was going to take and I didn't want the resin to get too thick for this to work. So yeah, just more smushing, um, pinching, smushing and just messing about with it until I was happy that I had the effect that I was looking for. Kind of hard to know what I was looking for because I've never done this. I've only seen videos on it, but I was kind of happy with how that looked. 
then just repeated it. I mixed up some more resin and repeated it for the final ones. So here I'd already laid it down, then remembered I hadn't hit it with the heat gun, so that's why I made a bit of a mess with this one. But more smushing, I've zoomed the camera in a little bit to try to show you what I'm doing, but it's kind of hard because I'm using both fingers to do this. And so you just want it wrinkled with a few peaks and troughs and not so wrinkled that the the polyurethane or the cling film or whatever you're using is going to get trapped underneath the surface of the resin and therefore make it impossible to to peel off so you want this to be on the surface really so here's just a quick close-up look of what they look like when i was finished with the smushing and pinching so now let that cure until the resin is firm enough to be able to peel that off and then put another layer on Hi guys, it's been 15 hours since I did the smushing, so I'm going to see how easy it is for this stuff to peel off. Um, I know cling film can be a bit of a nightmare. The pendants I made are fully cured pretty much. I know they'll carry on curing for another 24 hours, but this is pretty solid, so I'm going to do this without gloves, purely because I think it's going to be fiddly. Um, oh! Oh, it's coming off. <laughs> Expected more of a fight than this. Okay, there's a couple of bits where it's a bit sticky. Okay, that was all right. A bit of overspill resin here. Let's, uh, trim that because it's going to be a bit lumpy that's not polyurethane that is actually resin and it's got this overspill here as well use that again probably. Cool. So you can see that the resin has taken on that texture from the smushing. That's what's going to give it the depth when the mica goes on there. Oh, I'm excited now. There are a couple of little bubbles um, but nothing I'm overly worried about. Although this is my second attempt technically, it's my first kind of proper attempt at getting to this step. So if there are a few imperfections, I'm good with that. This stuff comes off so easily. underneath in that bit. I jinxed it didn't I? <laughs> that bit's just got a bit trapped that's all. I could try to not do that but there we go. Make sure there's nothing still stuck. trim some of this overspill but I'm not quite sure how without damaging the moulds. Um, don't know, think about that in a second, let's just get these peeled off first. I honestly thought with this being screw fixes budget polyurethane drop cloth that this would stick and be a pain like cling film does. But it just hasn't. It's really good. I was careful to not get it caught underneath the resin. I tried my best to not do that. So there's a couple of places here where it's snagged a little bit, where I've just pinched it a bit too hard. That was a dream. Thank you, Claire, for the 
great tip there. Um, and trim it with scissors. Try to not trim the mould. Boy, that took about 17 years, but I think I've got most of the, the bits off that I'm going to get. I did catch the moulds in a couple of places. Um, hopefully it's nothing too terminal. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to clean that up after if there is anything left. It is going to be the bottom anyway. Okay, so I'm using the Let's Resin Chameleon Powders. I'll take my floppy bracelet off and it doesn't dip in anything. Um, so the four colours that I've chosen are the blue, the plum, the grape and teal. I already know that I love the blue and the teal, um, but I thought these would be lovely. They've got a nice amount of colour shift, but they kind of feel like they belong together. There's no kind of clashes. So I'm going to use the brush that came with the, the um, Let's Resin Chameleon powders. It's really good. Um, doesn't seem to make mica fly everywhere it's really really good unlike some of the other brushes that I've used so I'm just going to do one of these in each color so I'm just going to pick up the the powder and just rub it all over these undulations and that's what's going to give it the depth when the next layer goes on need to get in all of the nooks and crannies and because they're all undulating and at different heights and angles it makes the chameleon powder really show up its different colours. So this would look nice just with a single colour powder, but with the colour shift, it really adds depth to these. She says, like I've made them before, uh, from, from videos of other people making them, I mean. <laughs> brush on some tissue and go with the next one so I'll go with the one that's got more blue in it just so if there is any kind of crossover it won't be too bad go with teal next I am so in love with this teal powder it is absolutely gorgeous been as excited about a resin project. Oh, I hope I don't do anything to ruin these at the last hurdle. <laughs> I need to have a think about how much extra resin to make for this because I don't want to make two batches and not colour match them so if I make a load too much I've got tons of pendant moulds that I can quickly um, fill with mica powder and fill up with black resin if necessary so yeah I'm gonna clean this mix up my resin obviously get my PPE on first and mix up the resin and then I'll be back
demold time. Oh god, I'm so excited but nervous because I really hope they've worked. I can already tell I'm going to have to do some sanding on the edges, but I'll worry about that in a second. So I've never demolded a coaster holder before, so I just want to take my time when I don't damage the mold. And this has been curing for not quite 24 hours, so the resin isn't going to be fully, fully cured at this point, so I want to be really careful. Okay, let's turn them over. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <gasps> these are so beautiful. I can't believe I made these. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. Sorry, this is ridiculously exciting. Look. Oh my god, these are stunning. Oh, I can't even, I, I just cannot even right now. so amazing it worked it worked oh god oh i'm just gonna see if i can trim some of this overspill off and then i'll try them in the holder so i just had to try to give you a close-up of each of them because you know trying to capture the multi-tonal quality of um, colour shift mica powder plus the depth of all of those wrinkles. It's really hard to pick up on camera what you're seeing with your eye. There's a sparkle and a glinting that happens with this mica powder that you just don't really see on a camera. Um, so I tried my best to let you see it. You can at least see the different colour shift because of the different textures that are kind of encased within the coaster. They're so beautiful. I'm, I could not be happier, honestly. I did do a little bit of sanding on the, the back edges, just where the, the kind of ragged overspill has met the black. It's not a problem. I just used a nail file and it's now really smooth and looks great. And they fit in the, the coaster holder, no problem. Um, I was so busy gushing about the coasters themselves that I forgot to mention I didn't get a single air bubble in the coaster holder, which is phenomenal. So, so happy. Uh, it didn't warp either and I thought it would. So, yeah, I, I am so over the moon with these. Um, so, yeah, I hope you found the video helpful. It was my first time, so I hope you found it somewhat helpful if you're thinking about trying this yourself. If you're thinking about it, please just try. If you can do it on a coaster this shallow, and I've never done it before and managed to pull it off, you totally can as well. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.